Hello everyone, welcome to my Call of Duty Advanced Warfare, veteran difficulty, no extra upgrades walkthrough. This is mission 6, Manhunt, and this is an okay mission. I mean, it's not as bad as the previous mission when it comes to annoyance. I mean, one combat encounter in particular is probably going to be a nuisance, but every other encounter in this mission is very simple. And um, I especially like the uh, the sniper encounter because uh, the sniper encounter it's not actually a real sniper shooting you it's like cinematic fire, so the sniper doesn't seem to hit you very well as long as you're moving, which is really nice and it's really cool that the game doesn't make that section feel like an RNG heavy mess. So nice, well done, Sledgehammer Games. But we're just doing some stealth right here, and then we're gonna be doing some stuff with this drone. And the drone stuff is very simple, although my accuracy is not the best because of how precise the shooting is with the drone, where it's very accurate to the point where it's very easy to miss, because of, that's how accurate it is. And this right here, if you miss any of these enemies and they get alerted to you and you don't kill them very fast, you will fail this part of the mission. And you really do not have a lot of time before the enemies trigger a kill state with you or a fail state. So make sure you are memorizing the spawns, uh, memorizing when to actually take out the enemies, and you will be fine. And right here, pay attention to this spot because there's a man that is going to attack Gideon, and then you just need to wait until your ally is uh, set up. Although right now is probably the best time to shoot. I just wait until uh, Ilona stops talking, and then I'm able to actually shoot. And one thing I do like about this section is the game isn't too rigid on when you're supposed to actually start doing things. Like, you can get started on so many other things that are supposed to happen in this part of the encounter before the characters actually tell you to do them. So you can speed by this part uh, very quickly. And right here, you gotta signal the mute charge and then take out these enemies before the mute effect actually runs out. And these enemies love to scatter around a lot, so it might take you some time to memorize where they are. But the red arrows will help you a bit, but they're not the most honest. And I oftentimes get kind of confused with where the red arrows are pointing, because I turn towards the red arrow, it disappears, but then I don't see the enemy. Like, the outlines that they give you just aren't the best with actually triangulating where the enemies are. And that is the end of this sequence right here, and we're continuing the next part of the drone sequence, where after we shoot this fake Hades, a bunch of enemies are going to start to attack Gideon, and I failed this sequence a couple of times because if you're not actively engaging with the enemies, or you keep on missing, or you don't prioritize the, the right guys, uh, Gideon will die very fast. Like, I must have failed the sequence at least three times. That, and that's like the, the total amount of times I failed the sequence, just trying to understand it. And even when I did understand it, I was still failing it. But uh, use the cars right over there to uh, kill all these enemies by making them explode. And then you want to come over to this side right here. Make sure you take out these technicals. The technicals, I think if you don't kill them, uh, Gideon is more likely to die. So I think there's three technicals in this part. And pay attention to the red arrows, even though they're not the most reliable. My accuracy is not the best right now, because the enemies keep moving, and this drone is very, very accurate at shooting. And once it gives the missile warning, uh, you are done with this part of the sequence. Although I find it really dumb how you can't just shoot the driver and just end this mission. Like, we just did some very flexible sections beforehand with the drone, but we can't just, like, hit the driver and just, like, stop him from getting away with Hades, and then we can just skip this whole entire sequence. Like, imagine how flexible that would be for the people that want to do this part of the mission, and then for the people who just want to end the mission very quickly. <laughs> that just seems very silly to me. But I'm just going to be running. Uh, this wasn't a clean recording. Uh, there are some parts where you'll see some trims because I died, because the game fucked me, and, like, look at this right here. You see the lighting? Like, you see the way, like, the sunlight is just so blinding because they're trying to capture that kind of effect? It's not very good at all, and when the enemies have this cheap advantage over you where they can see you, but you can't see them, it really feels AI in nature, and it's just something that Call of Duty will never, ever change with their AI systems. And it wasn't so much of a problem in uh, Cold War, because Cold War at least had the systems to balance out these enemies. And right now, we're making our way over to the next combat encounter, which is the hardest part of this mission. And this is where the game can potentially screw you over, because the enemies, they have so much trouble flinching in this game. Now, these enemies right here, these three enemies, they're not going to be doing anything to you immediately unless you shoot them. But there are just times where they will not flinch from your shot, so they'll kill you quickly. Other times, you'll get screwed by any of the civilians because they block your path. 
and these enemies are random. Normally that guy I just shot at, like the second guy I shot at at that spot, he will be set up near the top of the stairs and he'll shoot you very quickly. And this guy here is random, he chooses to hide right over there. And I'm saying it's random, but it actually isn't like, if you're actively like dealing with any hostiles that you see and you're just taking the path exactly like how I'm doing it, you should be fine. And I hide over here because there is a possibility that one of the enemies can sneak up right behind you while you're dealing with uh, these enemies that I'm looking at right now. Don't push on too far ahead because the flinch animation that is generated by the enemy shooting you is obnoxious. And I run out of ammo, so I have to swap to my Atlas 45. And then here's a chance to refill your ammo. It will refill your grenade. So what I'm going to do right here is I'm going to use my uh, smart grenades from the spot. And somehow I managed to kill a lot of the enemies. Like normally these four smart grenades aren't enough to kill all the enemies. But somehow I'm down to only one enemy left. And then another enemy just sneaks up behind me and tries to attack me. But I end up killing him. And also, I don't know if this enemy type has been in the previous missions. But I noticed that there was a heavy enemy type in this mission. It's a... Uh, armored variant of the normal enemy and it is a lot more resilient to stuns and it doesn't go down so quickly and that's the last enemy i kill but then there's going to be another enemy that sneaks up on me which i just explained and it's an armored enemy so you gotta make sure you don't look at these armored guys and just think oh they're gonna be pushovers they will mess you up very badly and here he comes right now. I don't even know why there are enemies spawning behind you while you're doing this. And look how much punishment this guy takes. And at least he flinched from a headshot just then. But it doesn't kill him. And we're now moving on. Here's the sniper section. And the sniper section isn't so bad. It's actually uh, well designed. It's not so bullshit like those previous sniper sections in the older Call of Duty games. And that right there. I tried to... Uh, go into a slide while I was in the air, like in Black Ops 3, but this game released before Black Ops 3, so I ended up going prone into the ground, which is always sad to see, because the movement on this game could have been so much better. Like, they're giving you all these options for dashing and sliding, but you can't really chain a lot of those moves together to really make the movement feel fluid and not so rigid. And you just you clip on everything, and it's obnoxious. And every time you trigger these cutscenes right here, you are completely invulnerable to the sniper. That is really good design. I imagine in some other sniper section, they wouldn't have any cutscenes like that that give you iframes, so you'd just be getting killed all the time. And make sure you have your EMP grenades prepped and destroy those drones. If you're lucky, you can get rid of all of them in one grenade, but I did it a little too early. And this civilian will break through and... The game, for some reason, forces you to not sprint, so try to jump in order to speed yourself up. It's very odd that way, I mean, like, there's a sniper shooting you down, and the game is forcing you to not sprint, which is dumb. And we're sprinting right here, there are a lot of drones right there. And these drones, they don't do the best damage to you, they aren't as damaging as the humans, and they're very passive in nature. But I still use a couple of EMP grenades, just in case, and I will get, uh, like, a, a refill at some point. But grab the Stinger Missile, and then kill this guy. And I seriously remember this section being a lot longer than this. I didn't realize it was this short. But like, the sniper section from Advanced Warfare always stood out to me as being one of the most memorable moments. And I think it's just because of the way uh, the sniper just actively shoots you, and he's just he's so inaccurate at shooting, but he fires a sniper rifle at a speed that doesn't make any sense. And I just like the way the sniper rifle sounds when he fires it. That's really why it's so memorable. But deploy your shield right over here. There are three guys, or four guys rather. And you see that? You see that bullshit? Why did I get pushed back like that? So it seems like there's this whole system where if enough enemies are shooting your shield, it pushes you back. That is so strange. Or maybe it's just really weird like physics on the, the guns and the shield. It's, it's so odd that it does that. But get rid of them and try not to get screwed by the very poor detection on the melee. And grab the maul. Uh, the maul on this mission right here, it doesn't fire smart grenades, it fires contact grenades that go in a straight line. And aiming this maul is kind of unnecessary, there's really no point. Uh, don't prioritize the ground guys just yet, there's a guy on a rooftop who can hit you very easily when you're over here. Try to get rid of him first, he's opposite me, he's just to my right. Uh, but I'm taking the time to get rid of these enemies with the maul. And you, you see that rooftop right over there? That's where he is. And I don't have the best ammunition right now. All I have is just the maul. And at least the maul has a lot of uh, rounds to fire. 
And I haven't even used my other abilities. I mean, if I wanted to, I could have used my stim to recover my health. Although the stim on this game is largely useless. Because you died so fast on veteran difficulty without the upgrades that the stim... It might heal you for like a split second, but then a split second later, you're just taking more damage. So, yeah, the stim is probably the most useless ability in the game. and Or maybe overdrive is, because I don't see any utility for overdrive at all. Because all it does is just slow down the game, yet the enemies, they have no changes in their parameters when shooting you. They still have the same perfect aim nonsense. So, what is the whole point of overdrive? It, it, it makes no sense at all. But really, like, the shield... And the Sonics are the only abilities that the EXO provides that are actually good. And I'm sure when we get introduced to new abilities, like for instance the Grapple, uh, the game will be a little bit more interesting, but I doubt it's going to impress me much. But we have two QTE sequences right here, you gotta hold square and then you gotta press R3 or press the melee button. And Hades is done, and somehow he's able to talk when we just slit his throat. That is a really dumb storytelling device. <laughs> I don't get that at all. There's there's no sense to it at all. Like he's not choking on his own blood. He's just he's speaking perfectly clearly. Like what was that? Like a superficial cut or was that a deep cut? It seemed like a deep cut. Yeah, that right there is probably one of the the dumbest forms of uh, storytelling I've ever seen in the game. And speaking of story, uh, Call of Duty Vanguard releases tomorrow, so I'll definitely be getting the game and I'll do a walkthrough of that game on the highest difficulty. And I know the zombies mode is not going to be interesting at launch because for some reason they've removed the round based zombies mode and they've removed the, the main easter egg for the first map of zombies and they're only unlocking it in February which I should definitely discuss my thoughts on that in the later videos. But other than that, this is the end of this mission. Stay tuned for the future missions. Thank you all for watching and you take care now.